What's good, YouTube? We're coming at you with another segment. This time we got two guest stars. We got my man Hazel, all the way from Baltimore, and we got my man T, all the way from Florida. And then of course it's your boy 2K to God and my man Sus. We back in the fucking building. For this one, we gonna talk about what's hot right now. That's gonna be Terrence Crawford. My man just beat the shit out of Derry John last Saturday on HBO. But see, what's really hot right now is he's supposed to be the next opponent for Manny Pacquiao come April 9th of next year. And that might be Manny Pacquiao's last fight. So we're all gonna give you our perspective on, on uh, the fight with Derry John. And we're gonna give you our perspective on whether or not uh, Terrence Crawford has a chance against Manny Pacquiao. Also, we're gonna talk a little bit about Canelo Alvarez and his demand to make Gennady Golovkin move down to 155, the challenge for the 160 belt, if he gets it off of Cotto. And then we also gonna talk about the crack, or the kind of crack that Kell Brook is smoking over there in the UK. Hmm. Talking about he's the best welterweight in the world. So, first question I'm gonna throw it at my man, Hazel. What did you think about the Terrence Crawford fight versus Jerry Jean? Did you think he's uh he did well? And do you think he's good enough to be a match against Manny Pacquiao? Well, he did well. He did almost perfectly tell you the truth. He could have ended the fight at any time, but he's not ready for Manny yet. He need one more fight against Mat Mat uh, Lucas Matisse or Ruslan for a Oh, Ruslan Provanikov. Yeah, that's a good-ass fight. Yeah, there's, there's one more against a top five, 140 opponent. So what did you see that, that tells you that he's not ready right now? Uh, he was getting caught with the overhand right, and his defense wasn't all that. Okay. So I say just one more fight so he can just, you know, tighten up on, on his defense. So you're thinking about maybe late 2016, he'll be ready for Manny Pacquiao? At least the summer. Summer? Okay. All right, what about you, What about you, T, over in Florida, man? What do you think about the fight, and do you think he's ready for Manny Pacquiao? I mean... He looked good against uh, Jerry Sean, right? Yeah. But he was supposed to look good in this fight. All right. You know what I'm saying? You so, can't compare. You can't compare this dude to Manny Pacquiao. So you think they fed Jerry John to, to Terrence Crawford? Of course, man. This is uh, this is the guy that's supposed to be one of the next uh, pound for pound kingpins. You know, you gotta build them up. You gotta make him look like a monster in the 140 pound division. And this was a, a, a perfect guy to feed to Terrence Crawford. Okay. All right. That's a good-ass assessment. What about you, my man, Sess? What you yeah. think about the fight, man? And is he ready for uh, Manny Pacquiao? <clears throat> I thought it was a great fight. Um, I thought I thought that um, Terrence went in there and he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, he, showed, he showed what he always shows, man. Terrence Crawford is hands down he's a he's a very 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 good fighter um at this point in his career he's already showing you know hallmarks of the potential to be great down the line i mean he can do whatever he wants to do in the ring you know and there are a lot of guys who can't do that they they only fight one way they can or they can only fight one certain style Tans Crawford, i believe with his skill set and what he's shown he can fight any style and he can fight anyone. Is he ready for Manny Pacquiao? Absolutely, Ooh. absolutely. Um, uh, to address what both of our guests said, uh, Tim, I think you said that he was supposed to look good against Derry Jean and they trying to build him up to be a monster. But, that, I mean, it's just that. They're not building him up to be a monster because he, he, he's showing the skill set that he needs to show to warrant that type of, uh, you know, that type of attention. You know, he's a switch hitter. He uh, he has power in both hands. He's knocking dudes down from the right-handed stance. He's knocking them down from the left-handed stance. I mean, you know, and, and, and like I said, man, at the end of the day, his skill set, I'm loving it. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a good fighter. The, okay. You skill set, you you know he's, he's something special. Yeah. I'm just saying, this isn't a guy that he beat that we could say, wow, you know, he's a... Uh, one of the top uh, uh, junior welterweights. It wasn't a top junior welterweight, you know what okay. I'm saying? To make me feel that he could beat Manny Pacquiao. Okay. 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 A lot of people believe <clears throat> that 
the angles that Manny Pacquiao is gonna throw at, and, and you guys <clears throat> jump in at any fucking time. Don't wait for nobody else. If you feel like you got some shit to say, jump in at any time. But uh, a lot of people feel like the angles that Manny Pacquiao would throw at, a, at, at Terrence Crawford, his hand speed and his volume punching would be the demise of a guy like Terrence Crawford. What do you guys think? Absolutely. I don't, I don't think so at all. At, 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 at this, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm i not a huge fan of Pacquiao, but I absolutely respect what he does in the ring, and I respect what he can do. But at this point in his career, the angles, no, he doesn't He he doesn't angle off the way that he used to. You know, he, he, he doesn't have the foot movement that he used to have. You know, man, now, back um, five, six, seven, about five, five years ago, absolutely. You know, Terrence Crawford, where he is now, and Manny Pacquiao five, six years ago, he beats him, you know. I, I, I have no problem saying that, but at this point in Manny's career, absolutely not, man. He, he, he's not gonna be able to do uh, what he used to do to to guys to Terrence Crawford. Okay. I mean, T, go ahead, go ahead, T. All right, let's look at um Crawford's last three opponents, right? Uh huh. It was uh first it was uh Yuri Yorkie's Gamboa, right? Yes, sir. How would you describe him stylistically? Gamboa or Crawford? Uh, Gamboa, pure boxer, right? Uh, I wouldn't. I, I don't think Gamboa is a pure boxer. I, would say, I think I would say he's more of a boxer puncher. Yeah, I boxer, think. I, right. Yeah, I, I I say he's a boxer puncher. Boxer puncher. Okay, I can see. I can see why you say he's a boxer puncher. Okay. He can mix it up. You're right. So what's, uh, your, what's your perspective on him? Well, I'm just saying. And then, then you look at the next guy. It was uh, Raimundo Beltran. Right. I, I think on, it. Man. Wait, wait, wait. My fault. My fault. My fault. T. Uh, Tim. I believe it was. Was it Thomas Delorme and then Beltran, or was it well, Beltran and then Delorme? Beltran and then Delorme. Okay. 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 My fault. Yeah. yeah. Bel- I thought Beltran was before Gamboa. No, Beltran was after Gamboa. Yeah, he okay. was after. He was okay. after. Yeah, so that guy's, you know what I'm saying, he's come forward, he's he's not explosive at all, he's, you know what I'm saying, he's, he's mm-hmm. a typical baller. Yeah. He's okay. tough, as, he's tough as nails, don't get me wrong, but he's slow, he, he's, not, he's not electric like Manny Pacquiao. Okay. You got, uh... I agree, I, I got to piggyback off of what Tim said. All okay. the Craw- Crawford last three opponents is telling me to a stop. So they basically wow. were showcase fights. That's why I say he need one more top five opponent. Okay. Because I agree uh, exactly with Tim saying. So what what do y'all think about Victor Postal before a Manny Pacquiao then? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, 2K. Let me let me let me go in real quick. Go let on. me address what uh what was just said by the fellas. Um the only okay, here's where I am, guys. What does Manny Pacquiao have problems with? Manny Pacquiao has problems with guys who know how to box and who can counter punch very right. well. What does right. Terrence Crawford do very well. He boxes very well and he counter punches oh. extremely well. And he counter punches very hard. Uh, the shot that he landed against Derry Jean, it was a counter punch. He counter, he counter, it was almost like a check hook, a right. check right hook out of the uh, southpaw stance. Right. What did he knock down? Uh, I think the first knockdown with Gamboa, it was that same check hook, man. So Crawford, Crawford is an extremely good boxer. Um, he, he, he's very, he's very, very, very smart in the ring, man. That's why I say he, he can do what he wants to do when he gets in the ring. Now, I do believe he does have to settle down at first. You know, he, he, he does tend to get hit sometimes, but at the same time, Manny Pacquiao gets hit a lot. You know, he, Pacquiao will walk right into punches, you know? So I, 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 uh uh-huh. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Even though you. I say he's not ready, he has the skills to put Manny to sleep. Cause Crawford overhand that right hand is his bread and butter, man. And you know, that's I'm, I'm saying he's not ready. Be- I'm saying he's not ready because he still needs one more opponent to get the man. He but that ready. right hook, that right hook is Manny medicine to put him to sleep. Let me, let me and we all this. know it and all see. Let me say this real quick, guys. <clears throat> it's not even the right hook that has me eyeing. Terrence Crawford as a formidable opponent against Manny Pacquiao. It's the straight right hand. 
And let's look at a lot of the opponents that are successful against Manny Pacquiao. They hit him cleanly with successive straight right hands. Manny Pacquiao's entire career, he's been susceptible to the straight right hand. I just watched the fight before we started the video conference, and um, I think I got to round five, and that's all I needed to see. You know what I'm saying? It, my, I counted four different styles that Terrence Crawford is able to employ while he's in the ring. And then he has, of course, two stances. He could go southpaw, he can go orthodox. The four styles I counted, he can box, he can be a boxer puncher, mm -hmm. he can fight you from the outside, and he can slug. He can do all of those things in the same fight. Another thing that, that got me very interested was that Jerry John said that he had to prepare for the southpaw stance and the orthodox stance. So that's having to prepare for two type of fighters in one fight. That's fucking outrageous, B. Yeah. That right there alone, I won't say who I think wins the fight right now, but that right there alone will give anybody problems. Yeah, and that's 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 where I'm at with this particular fight. I think I think for Manny, it's a very bad style matchup. I mean, he he, like I said, he has problems with boxers and and guys who counter punch very well. And at the same time, you got a dude that can that's a switch hitter. I mean, he can turn either way. He can apply pressure. He's got power in both hands. It, it, it's it's not a good style matchup for Manny Pacquiao. This being his last fight and where he is in his career, absolutely not. I actually, and, and uh, T, I'm going to go to you in, in a second here. I actually, I don't want him to fight Terrence Crawford. Um, I have that much respect for Manny Pacquiao yeah. that I, I would like to see him take out Amir Khan. That's the fight I want to see. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people share my sentiments, but Amir Khan is a guy that he's been calling out Manny Pacquiao. Um, apparently, they were in two different negotiations. The first time, uh, Amir Khan pulled out, and then he said that he'll give him another week or two or some shit like that. Then they went back into negotiations, and then ever since then, we haven't heard shit about it. I think that's an excellent fight. I think Amir Khan is actually, uh, he's, he's been on a very good streak. Um, the way he dusted Devin Alexander was fucking excellent. I had Devin winning that fight, you know what I'm saying? I got completely fucked over in that fight, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his, his performance against Chris Algeri wasn't that good, but nevertheless, he still won the fight. Um, yeah. I think that's an excellent <clears throat> fight for the both of those guys, and I think that's also an excellent fight um, for Manny Pacquiao's, uh, uh, his, his last fight. What do you think, yeah. T? Um, well, I agree with you on um, Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan making for a, a better fight. Right. I think uh, just the the amount of hand speed would just make for an, uh, a remarkable fight. Okay. But um, I was going to uh, say something on um, on Terrence Crawford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's never seen... A swarmer like Manny Pacquiao, and we know we can agree on this. Yeah, that's okay. a good point. Okay. okay. And you were saying that Manny Pacquiao struggles against uh, guys who shoot the right hand very well. Mm -hmm. But, and, and, and I know who you're talking about. You're, you're referring to guys such as uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Floyd Mayweather, even Chris Algieri, who had you know some success with the yeah. hand. He was popping him. You can't lie. Yeah. Tim, Tim Bradley lifted Brand. him. Off, Tim Bradley Brand. lifted him off his feet. Right. Yeah. 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 But these guys, believe it or not, they've all seen swarmers already. They, they were experienced with swarmers. So Manny Pacquiao wasn't really a surprise for them stylistically because okay. they've seen it already. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you know, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because all right, Juan Manuel Marquez, he had seen Manny Pacquiao three previous times before the fourth fight. Right. Right? Yep. With Chris Algieri, he, he had gotten into a fight with uh, Ruslan Provodnikov. Mm hmm And Ruslan Provodnikov swarms. Like, he's just all over you. Mm hmm And then Floyd Mayweather. Come on. Floyd Mayweather's been in the ring with fucking every style. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, he never fought, like, he never fought a young athletic boxer like Croft. Exactly. Young athletic Fight, and that's, that's... probably with Zab Judah, 
but yeah, but but Jad not, was like on the spot. Jad was like what 30, 30 something. This boy yeah. was what 24, 25. Yeah, right. see, that's the that's the that's the. Stop. So that was probably Zab Judah. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. the point. Floyd Mayweather had seen almost every style, and you know, for, uh, Manny Pacquiao was no fucking. It was no surprise, and, and Manny Pacquiao was a smaller guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We'll that, uh, you know, if Marcos Maidana was able to bully Floyd Mayweather, then Manny pa- no, Manny Pacquiao is not nearly as big as Marcos Maidana. <laughs> yeah, but let, let me. I'm sorry. Let me let me address two two of those points. Crawford gonna be bigger than Crawford is gonna be bigger than Pacquiao as well. You know, exactly. And he's gonna be longer than Pacquiao, and. Uh, Terrence Crawford doesn't have the the Manny Pacquiao hand speed, but Crawford does have deceptive speed. A lot of people don't don't think he's as fast. Don't think he's he's as fast as he really is. He's fast. You know, he like I said, he's not Manny Pacquiao fast, but he's got very good speed because he knows how to set his punches up. So, and another point is, um, Pacquiao does. I mean, like I said, he. He does very bad against guys that that box encounter. One of Terrence Crawford's key moves that he just does against everybody is that check hook out of either stance. And I can definitely see Pacquiao getting drawn into it because he's a what? He's a swarmer. And if you're a swarmer, what do I want you to do? I want you to swarm. I want you to come forward because the minute you do, it's one step and you're gonna go right into the check hook from either stance. And we even seen it in the Mayweather fight. Floyd was actually catching Manny with some good check hooks. It's just, you know, Floyd's not that good of a puncher. But Chance Crawford, if he swarms Crawford, it may work in the first round. It may work in the second round. But once Crawford gets his timing down and he can time that swarm, he's gonna walk him right into a check hook. So I, 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 I love the fight. Don't get me wrong, I love the fight, but I'm with 2K on this. His best choice would probably be to fight in Amir Khan. Uh, if he fights Terrence Crawford, like I said, I don't want to give my prediction, but I'm sure you know everybody watching the show knows where I'm going. But uh, you going know, to sleep. It, it, yeah, 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 yeah. He gonna <laughs> he gonna take a nap. He gonna take a nap, and 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 um, I don't think it's gonna be early. It'll be late. I know you know you don't want to give predictions, but hey, it, it, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Y'all niggas, already, y'all niggas done already did it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. He gonna take it now, but let me break it down for you guys real quick, man, real quick. Let me tell y'all what this is. If he fights Ter- if he fights Terrence Crawford, knowing that this is his last fight, this is nothing more than a cash cow being led to slaughter. And who owns the slaughter plant? Terrence Crawford. So that's what Bob Arum is doing. A lot of people are talking about Lucas Matisse, but you got to look at it like this. If I'm a businessman, why do I want to co-promote? Why do I want to split the money with Golden Boy and and top rank? Why not get two top rank fighters in the ring, keep the money in house, and I'm promoting the rise of another star while my my while my other cash cow is going out the door. You know, so that's what this is, man. I I. I I really do believe that, you know, Bob Ram is a snake and he don't give a shit about nobody, you know? And so that, that's what this is. You know, if they, if they do make this fight, it'll be Aaron, like I said, leading his cash cow to slaughter. And like I said, we all know who who owned the slaughtering plant. So, hey, it is what it is, you know? I agree. It's a, it's a a big business move, uh, Mm -hmm. trying to, to get a, a, a fading hall of famer, a fading legend out the door and to pass the torch in my opinion that's exactly how i see it that's what it is keep the money in house if he, but if he really want to cash out americon is the bigger name exactly Man, all that you yeah. take money and your money is going to come to vegas if that fight go down yeah Man, that's, I, the next, that's another mega another mega fight i now i agree with that but with with con and his situation we keep hearing he's in the running he's not in the running who, the guy that they're promoting right now and the name that people keep hearing is Terrence Crawford. I think if they were close to um, getting that con fight, you would hear that name more and more and more. Right. But the main name that we keep hearing is Lucas Matisse, Terrence Crawford, Tim Bradley. And, and Tim Bradley. You know, so, so 
So right now, I honestly believe that, um, like I said, man, if, if, if I'm a businessman, I'm not splitting the money with anybody. I mean, you can, you can, uh-huh. Um, you go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, you, you go ahead. You, you know, you can't have it both ways, you know? And Lucas Matisse just coming off a loss to the real fans like, you know, you guys, it's not a good look, but Pacquiao has done it before in his career. He's fought guys off a of losses. He fought Brandon, Brandon Rios off a of loss. You know, he fought um, uh, uh, Shane Mosley off of uh, off of the Mayweather loss, and after the uh, Sergio Mora split decision. So, so he 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 he's done it before. But at the end of the day, if you're going out out that door, and I can't make money off of you anymore, then what better way to kill two birds with one stone? That's all, all right. I'm saying. Basically, basically, Bob Arm looking for somebody to fight only cheap. Basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Before I end this part of the segment, uh, T, did you want to add anything? Um, I just wanted to say that I think it'll be a um a good fight. You know, it's, it's good for boxing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, the eight division uh world champion versus the uh up and coming superstar Terence Crawford is real good for boxing, Definitely. and we need more mega fights like this, man. Yes, sir. I 100% yes, agree do. with you, fam. Yep, yep. All right, next topic. Motherfucking Canelo. Motherfucker said... <laughs> I was born ready. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Photo. <laughs> <laughs> Gennady Golovkin has to come down to 155 if he is to beat Miguel Cotto for the WBC middleweight crown. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about this shit? And do you think it is a ploy basically stating, hey, I don't want the fight? What are y'all's thoughts? T, I'm gonna go to you first, man. All right. What did Gennady Golovkin say he would do if he were to fight Floyd Mayweather? Go to 154. Here we go. Go to 154, right? Yes, sir. If he said he can go down to 154, he could do 155, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So, don't uh, don't crucify Canelo for wanting a catchweight at 155 when Gennady Golovkin said he could make 154. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And then these Golovkin fans, they they want to say uh, Canelo's scared. He's not. So you. you would you say that uh, Gennady Golovkin scared of Andre Ward for wanting Ward to come down to 164? Good point. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Good fucking point. You the know, double standards. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's. That's what's. Okay, my, my my fault. That's what's killing the sport, man. It's the double standards. You know, if the if the fans want to see these particular fights, they can see them. Shit. But everybody got to be on the same page, and everybody has to demand these fights to happen you know if you want to see war versus Golovkin that's easy you know like I said it has to be an outcry for the fight but we know what the problem is the fans don't want to see it because they don't want their their golden goose losing you know and that's that's one of the big issues in boxing but to answer your question do I think it's uh, uh do I think he should go to 155 pounds uh if Canelo were to win um that's a tricky question, you know, uh, because Gennady Golovkin has done what he's done at 160 pounds, you know. Um, I can't deny what he's done. Now, it's not much, but because of the level of competition he's been fighting, but at the end of the day, it, there you go. So, but at the end of the day, um, he's remained dominant, you know, and he's beating everybody and he's knocking everybody out. So should he have to go to 155 for that fight? No. When you think about it like that. Now, when you listen to what Gennady is saying, then he should go to 155 because he keeps contradicting himself. He keeps grandstanding. That's his problem. You know, if Golovkin would just shut up and stop fucking contradicting himself, then the fans would 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 go crazy. They would go crazy because he should be fighting for the belt at 160 pounds. You just took in defense, by in defense of GGG, 
I don't know English that well. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. That's what he should say. That's exactly what he should say. Hell yeah. I want to me no English, you know? <laughs> Yo. Absolutely. You just took the shit right out of my, my mouth, B. Like, I feel like it, it, it's... And, and here come the dislikes right now. Click, click, click. You know exactly. <laughs> it's fucking ironic how my man wanted to get Andre Ward to come down to 164, a mm-hmm. weight that he's never fought at before. Mm-hmm. Actually, he's never been under 168. Yeah. Not, not in shit back when he was a teen, that's about it, right? Mm-hmm. But as a professional, never been under 168, right? Mm-hmm. He wanted him to come to 164, and he wanted a 50-50 split, right? I find it fucking ironic that Canelo and Miguel Cotto are able to fight each other for a belt in his division, right? The most prestigious belt, by the way. And actually, I believe the Ring Magazine, excuse me, title is on the line. So whoever wins this fight will become the Lenil champion at one at 160. Yeah. And Golovkin will still remain the number one contender, right? Even yeah. though he's been dominating the division. So I find it ironic that they want him to move down. Now 155 is still 160. Yeah. Because from 148 to 154, that's junior middleweight. 155 to 160 is middleweight. That's still middleweight. So Canelo is not out of his mind completely by requesting this. It's still a middleweight bout. But the thing is, Golovkin has never weighed less, at least at middleweight anyway, less than 158. You see what I'm saying? So this will be his lightest weight at this division, you know, to date. Um, I don't think that he has to do it. Uh, he could continue to be the Golovkin he is, fighting a bunch of CMB level fighters, and he will continue to have the fan base. He won't be able to bring pay per view fucking numbers because we've already seen this shit. Yeah, right? what? One hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? One hundred fifty k. He'll do that shit ten right. times over. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Fighting CMB level fighters, but. If he wants big drama show, you big know what drama saying? show, yeah. Unfortunately, he is not the most popular guy right now. Yeah. The most popular motherfucker right now, and I hate to say it, is Canelo. He is. Yeah. You know he probably has the biggest pay per view numbers outside of uh, Floyd Mayweather. Of course, he's gone now, but if we don't put him in the equation, besides Pacquiao, because he's on the way out, Canelo has the big has the most pay per view buys. Okay. Yeah. He's the last one left. Exactly. So, unfortunately, he's going to call the shots. So, if he wants big drama show, he's got to go to 155. Also, yeah. I want to make this point. I'm taking too much airtime from y'all niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Canelo and Cotto do not need to fight Triple G. Yes. No. He doesn't need to fight them. Or I either agree. one of them need to fight them. Cotto is the man right now. The mm-hmm. first Puerto Rican to win uh, titles in four different weight classes. He's the man right now. He's making millions. He's had his career. He's beat some of the fucking best. He's going to the Hall of Fame, B. You understand that? So this motherfucker has no obligation. And he made that very clear in his statement not too long ago where he said, hey, nobody tells me who the fuck I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight whoever the fuck I want. And so many words, that's 2K to God translated. But that's what the <laughs> fuck he said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he ha- he doesn't have to fight Triple G. Canelo, this motherfucker's already more popular than Triple G. Yeah. He's got Oscar yeah. De La Hoya in his corner, who is dragging him along exceptionally well. He's got this motherfucker duck- or dodging Demetrius Andre, the Charlo brothers, James Martirosian. Hell, he's even dodging motherfucking scrub ass Cornelius Bundridge <laughs> and the fans are still behind Canelo you feel me oh yeah yeah so, I can't say that he, he so, lost fans with the law with law man when law called him out man, there's a lot of Mexican dudes left that bandwagon man. oh yeah you yeah I'm with you on that oh yeah they they took they ba- I remember that they basically said that Canelo was a coward in so many words right yeah. See, that was before he took the fight. When he took the fight, right. they jumped right back on. That's how yeah. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. They jumped right yeah. back you know, on, and they, they, they were like, oh, he took the fight. He's not a coward. We love him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, you know, 
Motherfuckers are backing the fuck out of him, and he doesn't even have to fight the best, which is ironic because Triple G's doing the same thing, right? Yeah. So Canelo doesn't need to fight him. Yeah. These two guys don't need Triple G. Triple G needs them. Exactly. That was that was going to be my point. Um, that Triple G needs the Canelo and Cotto winner. The Canelo and Cotto winner does not need Triple G. So guess what? If you need a guy to get what you want, you basically at his mercy. If That's he what? wants you to, yep. if he wants you to come fit, come to 155, so you can win that, take that strap. Guess what? You got to do it. Now the fans will be a little lighter on you. Like I said, had you not opened your mouth and said. I'll fight anybody from 54 to 68. And and, and and then you say, I'll go to 54 to fight Floyd. Well, why the fuck won't you go to 55 to get the strap that's rightfully in your division? You know, that's the problem. You know, so like I said, man, Golovkin is slowly killing himself. Uh, go ahead, Hazel, get in here. All right, right now, he turned on going to 168 and fighting frogs. This boy, and, man. You know what? Man, this, you know what? I, I, how do you want to fight a retired fighter? You know? that, you, to your point, Hazel, it, when it comes to Golovkin, that's the question I've been asking myself. But it doesn't surprise me. You know, that that's that's what um, K2 promotions, those are the kind of fighters that, that they're feeding uh, Golovkin. But let me make this point. Let me paint this picture real quick. For the... Canelo Cotto winner. Now, I'm just speculating. I don't have any sources. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is what I believe is going to happen, okay? Golovkin is on record saying that he won't go to 55 to fight for the 160-pound middleweight championship title, regardless of who the winner is, right? Now, what's going to happen is the winner of that fight has a, I believe, is it a 12- or 15-day mandate 15. To 15, okay, it's a 15 day mandate to organize a fight with Gennady Golovkin or be stripped or vacate the title. Now, in boxing, we all know nobody wants to be Riddick Bowe back when he was uh, uh, scared to fight Lennox Lewis and throw the belt in the trash. Yeah, you know, nobody wants to look like that. So, what'll happen right, right. is, what'll happen is, these guys, one of these guys is gonna win. They've already implemented that they want to fight him at 155. He won't fight him at 55. So what will happen is they will probably, more, more than likely, they're going to be stripped because the negotiations won't go through and they won't organize the fight. They won't come to any kind of decision. So these guys will be stripped. Now, they don't want to fight Golovkin anyway. I, I, I truly do believe in my heart of hearts that they don't want to fight Golovkin. I agree. So what better way than to be stripped rather than win the title and vacate, you know what I mean? And 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 look like, I, and I hate to use this word when it comes to boxers, but, and look like a coward. Look like you running from a guy. Look like you don't want to fight him. You know, why would I win the title and then immediately give it up knowing who's next in line? Nah, strip me, you know? I, 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 I'm sorry, Hazel, I'm gonna wrap it up. I got the accolade. I, you good, I, you good. I got the accolade, I won the belt, you know, and I'll be recognized as, you know, I guess the legitimate 160 pound champion shit. So Golovkin will get the title, but he won't get it with the big drama show like he keeps on saying. He'll get it um, through these guys vacate, well, through these guys being stripped and he'll probably be handed the title or maybe he'll fight some nobody for it or some bum fighter for it. Another way out that situation for Canelo and Cotto is a rematch. Oh, I absolutely. Just have a rematch. Absolutely. And this phase to GGG out the whole situation. Oh, and it's more money because this baby room gonna do like two mil. They're talking Maybe about more. a trilogy. They're talking about a trilogy, Hazel. Hey, that's how they're gonna phase him out the whole situation. They're gonna make him move to 168. He's already about to be 34 years old. He's they sitting could. around wasting years off his career. Yeah. So the best best for him to do is go to 168. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting on two smaller men. It's not making any sense. Yeah. I think I think that's what he's I think that's what his promotional company is. They're probably trying to do that. They're trying to move him to 168. And with with Ward being out of the, the division, it may be a smoother transaction than what it was gonna be. But at the end of the day, that's probably what they're doing. You know, they 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 know that 
that uh, you know possibly there'll be a rematch or a trilogy, and that that'll totally cut Golovkin out of getting the prize that he wants. So move to 68. You know, um, I don't like him fighting. Hey. No, I don't like him fighting Carl Frouch at 68. You know, there's there's plenty of other guys he can fight. Um, uh, on our last video, I mentioned Saki Obika. You know, at uh, 68. You know, rather than I'd rather see him fight Bika than a retired ass Carl Frouch. You know, because if I know. Fight, if he my fault, but if he hmm. fight Beaker, that's the fight I want to see, man. Because I'm oh, yeah. not believing the hype yet. I'm no, I'm not. Beaker will make him fight. Exactly, that's Absolutely. my point. Yeah, what you I just. Think, T? Yeah, what you uh, think, T? All right, I'm gonna talk about. Uh, let's say Canelo wins, right? Okay. I think he's gonna have to come up to 160, man, mm. and he can't make 154 anymore. We know this. We know he can't make 154 anymore, so we could forget about him fighting the Charlo brothers, uh, um, uh, Cornelius Bundridge, Demetrius Andre, blah, 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 whatever. Right, okay. He has to come up to 160. We saw he's looked drained in his past few weigh-ins, just making 155. Right. So he has to come up to 160. So I don't, I don't understand why he, he wants to kill himself to make 155. Especially for fighting Gennady Golovkin, I think he'd actually have a better chance at making 160 to fight Golovkin. It's different for Cotto. See, if Cotto wins, then I understand him making the catch weight because Cotto started off at junior welterweight. He's a small man. Mm -hmm. He's small for the for the junior middleweight division. Mm -hmm. So, I'm saying Canelo's gonna have to come up to 160. I'm telling you right now, he has to go there. I don't know if he's. He's scared to go up to one. He has to go. Well, you got to look at Canelo's career. I agree with you 100%. Actually, I'm going to add to that and say, if you're fighting for the fucking belt at 160, you need to take your stupid ass to 160. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going I'm, to I'm I'm go ahead and put that on there. But you got to look at Canelo's career. He's always fought smaller guys. A lot of people don't know, but he fought Miguel Vasquez at 135. Yes, yes he did. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He's always fought smaller guys. He's his career is based on feasting on smaller guys. So and that's what he's gonna continue to try to do. Matter of so, fact, is James Kirkland the only junior middleweight he's ever knocked out? Like the, the only natural junior middleweight he's ever knocked out. Shit, I gotta go back and I look at yeah. his resume, but I know I he's the, he is the I mean he did drop trout though. Well, see, did, yeah. he knocked him down, right? But see, yeah, but you know what's crazy about that fight is he didn't look spectacular in that fight. No, he didn't. Kirkland no. was landing punches and fight. Canelo Me. was tired. And Canelo was tired. No, he didn't look good. Yeah, but see, yeah. But see, Kirkland, that's a good question, T. Uh, T I think he, he probably might be the only bona fide 154 pounder that he's gotten out of there. I got to look at his resume. But the thing is, if he has knocked out other 154 pounders, they weren't B level. You see, they weren't even B level. We won't even yeah. fucking talk about A level. You know what I'm saying? I think what, what, what's what's Cat's name? Contender Alfonso fucking Gomez. You oh know yeah, what I'm Alfonso right. Gomez. That nigga was weak as fuck. I think he was 154. You know what yeah, like the ballroom dance, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. Go ahead. Go ahead, T. Alfonso Gomez started off in the lighter weight classes because if you recall, Cotto fought him years back at 147. Was that at 147? Wow. Yeah, that was at 147. Okay. So, I was telling people this. People compare uh, the Cotto and Canelo wins, like the, you know, the, the, the mutual opponents that they have. Right. Cotto's beaten these guys when they were closer to their natural weight classes. And when they were younger, right. Canelo beat up on these guys when they were, you know, going up in, in a weight class that they weren't used to. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, love. Uh, what's his guy's name? Love more. Uh, oh, love, no, love more than do. Come on, love, 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 yeah. yeah. Cotto fought him at 140, and he's a natural 140 pounder. Canelo fought him at 154. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He's, so you're. You're right. He has been beating up on a bunch of smaller men. Canelo won his first world title against Matthew Hatton. Yeah, I remember that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he wasn't a, a natural 154 pounder either. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. So regardless of him beating up on Small Lamendo, we know he cannot make 154. So he has to make that decision of whether he wants to keep killing himself to fight smaller men or move up and, and fight the big men. I agree. All right, people. We're going to go to the next topic. We got about three minutes left. This shit should be very fucking quick. My man, Kel Brook, said he is the best welterweight on the <laughs> planet. Hazel, man, what you think about that shit? He may be the best welterweight in the UK, but nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he better than Kel. Frankie Gavin and shit. Right, right, right. Or JoJo Dan, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Man, Kel need to come to America, man. He need to stop playing, bring that belt back to the States, man. Yeah. Fight yeah. somebody. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think, uh, I think the problem, well, let me say this. When they asked that question, I don't think they asked Kel Brook. They had to ask <laughs> JoJo Dan or Frankie Gavin, like Hazel said. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, against who? According to who? Who have you beat that would validate that statement? You know, uh, uh, what have you done? Yeah. You know, he hasn't done anything. He beat Sean Porter, and that was a ugly, messy, rough and tough fight. Um, he had a now. Don't get me wrong. He had a good game plan against Sean Porter, but at the end of the day, how are you the best? Uh, what is what is best welterweight on the, in on the planet? He's the best welterweight on the planet. Come on, Kel. Like I said, I fully agree with Hazel, man. Bring that belt back home, you know, to the states, or you know, to us, and fight somebody, man. I mean, you know, it, 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 why don't you worry about not get? Why don't you worry about not getting injured? You know, <laughs> he, he he won the belt. Unfortunately, he got stabbed, so he was out. Then he came back. Had a comeback fight. Then he gets injured against, you know, for the Diego Chavez fight. So, come on, man. We need we we need you to stay healthy and stay out of these dark alleys that you're walking through. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and and, and 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 fight somebody, man. Because I like the dude. You know, I think I think he's a good fighter. I like him. You know, I like his size. At um at the way he fights. At I just want to see him fight somebody. Yeah. Legitimate. What do you think, Tim? Do I think he's the best welterweight in the world? I know you don't, but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, besides Sean Porter, who has he fought? Exactly. And yeah, he beat Sean Porter, but it was an ugly fight and it wasn't uh, an, an impressive win. Mm -hmm. He's fighting Diego Chavez, who shouldn't even be a contender for the for the IBF title because he was coming off the, the draw, the very controversial draw at that against Tim Bradley. Exactly. Like, with that shit, man. Fight knows he lost that fight. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It should have been the other way around. See, Tim Bradley and, and Kel Brook should have been fighting in a, in a unification bout. Yep. And Diego Chavez should have been fighting Brandon Rios. Exactly. Yeah, they should have been fighting each other to see if they could be become number one contenders for one of those belts. Yeah, and you know that's 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 actually what I thought was supposed to happen. I thought Bradley was supposed to fight Brooke in the UK. I don't know what happened with the negotiations. I don't know why it fell through, but um, you know it's not happening. So I fully agree with you, uh, T. Whoa. But Bradley did right. But Bradley did right. Why fighting in the UK when he fought Sean Porter here? Bradley's the bigger name. Oh, yeah. But Bradley did yeah. right, but not accepting that fight. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a miracle, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The negotiations on Bradley's side could have been much better than they were. If 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 that was the reason for that fight falling through, then, you know, they, they definitely could have negotiated way better than that. I mean, Bradley's the more accomplished and a way more known fighter, you know, so... I don't know what the deal was, man, but but like I said, it, it, I, I uh -huh. also with El Diaz, I think there was a lot of you know drama going on there, so they probably weren't uh they probably weren't one hundred percent focused on a a Kel Brook fight. They're just yeah. trying to they're just trying to get Tim to fight. Period. That's a good point. That's a yeah. I can see that. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say this shit. You know what I'm saying? 
nigga like me don't do drugs, you know. I don't smoke weed, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't smoke a pipe. I don't sniff cocaine. Ah, we. Y'all we, said. <laughs> we encourage all the kids to just say no. This is a drug free no. program. But. Yes, sir. But. If I did. I want the same shit this motherfucker got. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who the fuck this nigga is comparing himself to. He must be comparing himself to the fucking lollipop kids or some shit. See, <laughs> or fucking Patrick Swayze or somebody, dog. There's no fucking way this nigga is the best welterweight. Yo, I know motherfuckers that have better resumes than him that aren't even that don't even have belts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Get the fuck out of here, Kel, bro. This rocket looking like Earl Spence right now, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Get the yeah, fuck out of here, bro. All right, fam. I'm going to go ahead and end this segment. It's your boy 2K to God, my man, Sess. I want to thank my two guests, T and Hazel. Do what you do in the comment section will be real. This is real talk for real fans. One. All right.